Hey Unity developers, if you're building a game, you've probably needed to drag and drop something, whether it's an ability, an item, or maybe you want to just place something into the world. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use the Unity drag and drop system. We'll start with the basics so you know how it works and how you can adapt it to your own systems. And then we'll go into a more advanced example where you can move items around in an inventory, swap slots, drop them onto the ground, or even give them to another player. Before we get started though, make sure you drag your mouse down to that like button and drop a like or leave a comment and let me know what you think and what you'd like to see in the future. All right, let's go. Here I have an example project that you can download in the link in the description. You can see that I've got components that I can drag around. If I drop them on this black area, they just snap back to the home spot. But if I drop them over here, well, then they appear on this scroll. If I drag it around, it goes back to where it started. It works for text, it works for buttons, it works for toggles, and this works for any UI element. So how does this work? Let's take a look. Well, first you'll see that I've got a canvas. We're using Unity's UI system, not the new UI system, the um, I can't, UI elements. This is the in-game system that everybody is still, for the most part, using. You can use UI elements, and it's a slightly different setup for that. But if you're not, which again, most aren't, this is the way to do it. So you've got a canvas here, and we've got a panel underneath it. The panel doesn't really matter, but it gives us some info about where we're dropping. That's this big black area, so I can see where I'm dropping my object. Now I've got these four or three droppable areas and notice in the top right that they're tagged as droppable. They're just images. There's nothing else special about them except I did add a tag named droppable. And I did that just by going to add tag, typing in the name and then going through and assigning it to all of them. It's not a special tag or anything. You'll see how it's used in the code in just a second. Then I have a draggable text, a draggable icon. It's a draggable toggle and a draggable button. I just didn't rename them. And they're all draggable with one little component here. This this drag drop thing. And I tried to keep the name as generic as possible because it works for any UI component, doesn't really matter what it is. If I have this component on there, I'll be able to drag and drop the component or, or the object and move it around. And if I have the reset position on release option checked, if it's going to an empty spot that's not a droppable spot, it will reset the position. Let's see what happens if I take my icon and I uncheck that. I should be able to just drag it here and it goes and stays wherever I want. But if I only want it to stay on to droppable stuff, then when I drag it, it'll snap back to whatever the last spot was unless it's droppable. Let's take a look at that code now. This is the entire script and it's actually bigger than it needs to be just to make it a little bit easier to understand with some debug logs. The most important part to note though is right up here at the beginning, right on the top at our class definition. We decide that it's a mono behavior because it's gonna be a game object component. And then we tell it that we want to implement the iDrag handler the I begin drag handler and the I end drag handler interface. If you go look these up, you'll find some examples, but I feel like those examples are a little overcomplicated for really just understanding what it is you need to know here. First, let's look at the field that I've got. I've got a reset position on release that's set to true, and then I've got a private variable here for our start position. These are gonna be used for snapping the object back. Just remember those and let's continue on. Let's go to the on begin drag method first because this is what's gonna happen initially. I should have probably moved it before on drag, but you get the idea. On begin drag happens as soon as we start dragging an object. So we click, we start dragging. You'll see that this begin drag method is logged out. And then here I've got a little meth or a little check to say, hey, if we're going to do the reset, then just cache my starting position so I can snap back there. If you don't want to do snapping back into positions, then you don't need that kind of code. Then in the on end or on drag, let's go back up here instead of skipping down. In on drag, we move the object to the event data position. This event data that's passed into the on drag method is going to tell us exactly where that object is being dragged. So if I just move the transform position to that position, it will stay right there. This allows me to move around any object along the canvas. And these positions are going to be those relative positions in the canvas. It's going to give you, well, it gives you the world space position, but it'll map it all out relative to your canvas and just kind of magically work. Then in the on end drag, we do a couple, one little thing, which is a ray cast in into the scene or into the canvas. So we use the event system dot current dot raycast all method. And we probably could cache this this hits list if we wanted to, but we don't really need to. 
we do a rate cast and then we get back a list of things that we've hit. And I say that we could cash it just for performance reasons. Again, kind of ignore that. It's not a big deal. But if you're worried about it, you could save this off and not, not initialize it here. So next up, we figure out if we hit anything that was droppable by using the first or default link statement, which is just going to search this list of Raycast results and find the first one that has the droppable tag. If there is one, so it'll, it will have a valid Raycast result, then we'll say that, hey, we dropped it on this object and then return. Otherwise, we'll snap back. So that's how the dropping onto a droppable spot works. Let's go take one more look at that with the log open here and see that in action so we can see when we start dragging, look, let's clear the log. I click, I start dragging. You see the begin drag happened and I'm logging out the position I drag at. And here you see all the dragging messages. And then when I drop it over here, if I drop it on this black spot, it says end drag and it just snapped back. And if I drop it over here, of course, it says it dropped on a dra dropped draggable icon on droppable area. So then it stayed there. Here I've got a basic inventory from my multiplayer mastery course. I've got two characters and I can move items around from slot to slot and even drop them onto the ground, pick them back up or drop them over to other characters, have them get excited, drop them around and even have them pass them back. So this is all using the same drag drop code or very similar drag drop code with a slightly different change. And I wanna show you how I go about implementing that so that we can drag the icon, show the visual there and drop it into place. Let's take a look. The drag drop part of this inventory system uses two scripts. First, there's a UI inventory slot. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. There's also a drag icon script and a drag icon object that just has a spot for a sprite. It's an image and this is the thing that actually gets drug around. Let's take a look at the inventory slot and I'll show you how this works. So in our inventory slot, we bind up to an item controller and a specific item in there. And I'm not gonna go into depth about exactly how that works. It's part of the multiplayer mastery course. It's a little bit beyond this scope, but just know that it's binding this slot to a specific item. You just have to have a reference to whatever the item is in whatever you're storing it in. It could be a list in your items controller. It could be something that's stored on a server or wherever else, but you're gonna have some way to represent or associate your draggable object or your draggable source with the thing that you want to drag around. This could be an ability name. It could be an ability ID. And an NPC that you want to drag out, or maybe it's a turret that you want to drag out into the world, you assign it something that you want to drag. And you could do this in the inspector too. This could just be something that you assign in the inspector and you don't have necessarily a bind method. Refresh visuals just updates the visuals when we swap items out to show a new icon. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. I think the important part though is down below where we get into the dragging and dropping. So in the on begin drag, I find that drag icon that I talked about a moment ago and I tell it to set its sprite to our current sprite. So this is an, an inventory system. I've got a hat. I want the sprite to match the hat sprite. And then I tell the drag icon to turn itself on. The on drag method moves that icon around just using that event data position. Pretty simple, right? And then the on end drag checks to see if I dropped it onto any of these specific things. And if I did any of them, it turns the drag icon off. So the hard work, of course, is happening inside of these methods. The drop inventory on slot, drop on character, and drop on ground. Let's go take a look at that. Drop inventory on slot does a ray cast into the UI. And again, we could save that hits array off or that hits list off if we wanted to. And then it loops through them, looks to see if any of the things that we dropped onto are an inventory slot. And if so, it calls this swap method and returns true so that it knows, hey, don't check to see if we dropped on anything else because we already dropped onto an item and go ahead and disable that drag icon afterwards. Let's go take a look at the swap method. Swap method tells my inventory system and this would be telling your whatever system to swap items around. It could be an ability system, again, it could be an inventory or whatever, to just change the data in those two things. And then that, of course, fires off an event, which then calls back and updates our item visuals, which then just changes out our sprite. So there's kind of a, a loop there, we update that, and then we get an update in here. The last thing that I wanted to take a look at are the drop on character and drop on ground methods because these aren't very difficult to add. If you have drag drop into the world or into a user interface, you can make it so that you can drop onto a character. You just check, hey, do a regular raycast, 
Check for a character object. If so, then, hey, tell your inventory you dropped onto a character. What does that do? I don't know. In my game, it just gives the item to the character, including an NPC, but it could do whatever you want in yours. Or you could do drop on ground and, again, drop out turrets. You know, maybe this is how you do your buildings and you drop them on the ground, take away money, spawn a turret there, do whatever it is that you like. But dragging and dropping into anywhere is pretty simple, just using this simple method. Use the on drop, check to see what thing you possibly wanted to drop onto, put them in order of priority, and then handle them. I hope this was helpful. If so, um, make sure that you leave a comment, thumbs up, and all that stuff. And if you have questions or anything that you want to know more about, make sure that you drop those down below as well. And if you want to learn how all of this works and a lot more in a multiplayer context in a bigger setup, make sure you check out the Multiplayer Mastery course. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. All right, thanks again. See you in the next video.